Hey everybody, the Laying It Down for Camp Buckle fundraiser is still going on. The donations have slowed down, but the hoses have not. This sea can is starting to get filled up. These are the ones I just unloaded from the trailer. Those are the ones that were sitting here since last year. These are all still sitting here from last year. We're looking to get donations rolling in. In addition to those hoses that I just showed you, I still have a picture that I'm gonna insert right here of all the fire hoses that are still up in Pickering, Ontario. Thank you to the Toronto Social Housing for donating 95% of these fire hoses, as well as everybody else from Southwestern Ontario and Ontario for donating hoses. But let's get those donations to roll in. The link is posted below. 20 bucks a hose. Let's get some money in and let's support Camp Bucko. Thanks, guys. Like and subscribe. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Fire Sprinkler Podcast. We are Austin, Texas at the NFSA Conference and Expo. I'm here with Nick Martin from JCI and we're gonna do a little conversation. We're gonna learn a little bit more about the new rapid install ESFR sprinklers. We've talked about this on a previous episode, but now we're gonna do a little bit of a demonstration. Nick, yeah. how's it going today? Going okay, buddy. Yeah, still yeah. too early to tell, but so far so good. Yep, yeah, <laughs> going good. Awesome. This is the last day of the show, you know, like it's been a pretty good show so far. A lot of exciting things come out. And, yep. uh, you know, just, I like I like walking these booths just as much as you do. Yeah. Like seeing all the new stuff. And, yep. Um, this is something that we've been that we've had it out in the market for about a year now, yep. um, and just trying to take advantage of this nice demo unit that we created. And how's the how is the market taking the new the new ESFR product, the new Rapid Seal? So any customers who have tried it, they really haven't chosen to go back. Right. I, I've, I've, this is one product that I really have I've heard ne no negative reviews whatsoever on. Um, it really is just getting it out in front of fitters and getting with the fitters on site. Yeah. Talking with them about the new technology because, you know, like like me, like uh, fitters are not fond of change. That's right. They don't like change. This is not, it's gotten better over the past five, six years, I would say. Uh, but the fire protection industry has done something a certain way. Like my grandfather used to say with the groove couplings, groove couplings are going to, you know, kill the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and they haven't gone anywhere. No. Right? No. Um, you're either evolving with the industry or the industry is going to evolve without you. And this is just another step in that right direction. Yeah. So what are the benefits of using the rapid seal versus a standard ESFR sprinkler? If we're looking at them side by each. So we're looking at them side by side. Um, one, there's no Teflon tape or dope required on this one. So you take a whole, a whole purpose of prep out of it. Like you look right. at, you look at a box. We're looking at this box here. Yep. Um, if you were to, tape and dope this box, which I know you're supposed to choose one or the other, but most fitters on one inch outlets kind of choose to do both. Yeah, a lot of them will do both. So uh, if you're doing tape and dope on these, uh, you're gonna be about 16 minutes a box. Right. And I mean, you got 50 heads to that box, you can kind of do the math. Yep. Um, another thing we're kind of taking out of is the, the head wrench. Okay. So you look at a 300 head system, you're saving on average about 25 cents if you eliminate having to purchase the head wrench. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sprinkler. Yeah. Um, and not to mention, you know, these things are supposed to be for the head boxes and like they're also sp supposed to be for the install. Yep. Um, got, it's not a not a small wrench, man. It's not a small wrench. It, and it, with the bigger sprinklers, as you get into the bigger sprinklers, what I tend to see out in the field is guys, bigger threads, you got to crank them in there. Mm -hmm. And not always necessarily the case, so to speak, but a guy thinks, we got to turn this wrench as hard as we can to get it snug. And when you get a big wrench like this with the length, you can get some, you can get some leverage on that bad boy. Yeah. And when, whenever we were, whenever we were developing this product, we are trying to get, we are we, we seen all, we saw other products come on the market and like we, we really wanted to figure out a way to eliminate the use of an additional tool. Right. Cause like if you're adding a tool to the lift, then like, like even this, like this does not fit in my pocket very well. If I put this in my pocket and I start installing, if I, I yeah, start yeah. installing sprinkler heads, then uh, I'm gonna end up dropping that thing a dozen times. That's right, yeah. The um, ergonomics on carrying this thing around ain't bad. You almost do yeah. need a holster for it. Yeah, it is good though, because you can get good workout if, yeah. you, if you're really. <laughs> yeah, I'm obviously into that realm of things now, <laughs> working out lifting stuff. But um, now, but with this, we completely eliminate the, the use for a wrench at all. Um, your, your wrench is your hand. Um, yeah. Uh, another benefit that we kind of did is like, what's your version of tight? You know, well, what's my, my version, version of tight? Yeah, my version of tight might be different than your version of tight, might be different than Jim's version of tight and Joe's version of tight and everything like that, right? Yeah. I know there's obviously torque specifications that almost every sprinkler has yeah. from the manufacturer. Do you guys have a minimum torque spec on this sprinkler? Uh, no, we, no, there's not There's not a minimum torque spec on this sprinkler. Um, on on uh, traditional sprinklers, there is a torque yeah. spec. Yep. It kind of ranges. I. I don't want to 
off the cuff, I'm kind of just shooting numbers out there, but I think it's like a 50 pound torque spec for this size, like 30 pound for this size, and yep. like a 15 for this size. So like now, it's kind of pretty standardized across all the manufacturers. All the manufacturers. In the name of professionalism now, am I going for a 50 pound torque on this? It's just be because when your, I go, I gotta know when to. It's gonna be yeah, one that's of your higher, pounds. it's gonna be one of your higher torque requirements the, okay. with the one inch. Um, and then, I mean, we even have inch and a quarter heads that require even a higher torque. That's a big, it's um, a big boy. But then you can over torque too. That's right. another concern. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times, uh, you have an activation on site, something like that. They, what, what's the first thing that somebody asked you? Did you use the right wrench? Of course we use the right wrench, yeah, right? Because everybody's got the right wrench. There was one sitting here, but it's not there anymore. Yeah. But it's a Crescent wrench. That's the one that everybody, I don't care what you're saying, everybody's installing sprinklers with a Crescent wrench. Yeah. And and the thing is, they don't sell Crescent wrenches in the, in the industry standard sizes. So what's right. funny is whenever I can work for Tyco, that's actually one of the things that I learned about why are head wrenches different for different types of heads? Right. And one of the things that whenever on the engineering side of uh, the length of the wrench is what really matters. I mean, of okay. course, we always require that you install or that with a factory yep. wrench because it also holds on to this. Yep. But what is important about the links and the way that we design these is we kind of make them longer for those additional torques. Right. Like we. We figure that somebody can has no problem pulling or put like pulling about 14 foot pounds of torque, and we have to figure out a way to multiply that by adding length to the handle. Sure. So, hate to say it, like whenever fitters are out there, like they they're gonna be installing 300 of these things. Yeah. Like so, they're trying to make it as easy as possible on themselves, and doing this 300 times in a row, like it hurts. Yeah. Like yeah, it, it's yeah. ergonomically not not. Not sound. There's like, not know, too many fitters out there that actually make it to the end unless they get into inspections early on in their career. If they're spinning wrenches all day, they're usually yeah. beat up and, and, you know, surgery, surgery, surgery. And you think about it, like, you have a lot more benefits whenever you're pulling pipe because pulling pipe, you're using your back, your shoulder, and you got yeah. your hold back wrench. So, like, you're, in, you're incorporating so many muscle groups yep. in, that, in that instance. But whenever you're installing a one-inch sprinkler head over, overhead, yep. All you have is that upper shoulder muscle and then ligaments. Yeah. And yep. you're just wearing them down every yep. time that you try to do that. So, you know, what ends up happening is at the beginning of the day, guys installing them, things tight is tight, and then goes to fill up the system. He realizes that three of them need to be tight in another half turn. Yeah, the last three that they put in towards the end of the day, probably. Yeah, possibly, or yeah. It, it could just be flip. It could just be throughout the system, but that's yeah. kind of an anomaly that, that is pretty much all ESFR one inch installs. Right. Like I was a fitter for for 10 years. Yep. And in that time, uh, I always tell people, or people always tell me, I don't have leaks, I don't have leaks. But in that time, I know that I s at least installed 10 to 15,000 sprinklers, like You're gonna have myself leaks. Yeah. and every system was the same. Which like is I would, crazy. I as, would, a, as a guy who moved from the field into the design, I don't put leaks on the system. So I don't know why guys are putting leaks <laughs> on all the time. <laughs> but but the hydros would all go the same. I would I would yeah. I would I'd put on my hydro, go to lunch, come back, and I'd find two to three heads on the system that I'd sure. then have to drive my lift two to four miles per hour to the location. Yep. And then <clears> go up, tighten another half turn. Yep. And then hope I don't break a head or pop a head. Yeah. Um, because by that time, a lot of times people have already tossed these guys off. Oh, they're gone. And they're in yeah, the trash yeah. somewhere. Yep. So um, to kind of reduce that a lot, like this is a technology that also gives that advantage. Um, now you're talking about the caps going missing. Yep. Have you seen the the rumor going around about the the replacement? We started a we started a rumor about four or five years ago in the sprinkler industry, and guys are picking it up all the time that you can recycle these and bring them back to Tyco and all the other manufacturers, and you guys will give swag for them. And we uh, started it as a joke, yeah. And it spread across the world as people were like, "I've got a bag. I, I, I just got assigned a warehouse. It's fifty-five thousand sprinklers. What do you think I can get for those?" And, and we'll <laughs> chime in, and we'll, "Oh, you can get a truck for that. They'll give you a bass boat if you bring all those back. Think about <laughs> the recyclables. That. It's awesome. It worked. It works so good. Uh, check with your local supplier." What's funny is I heard those rumors like from people. I'm like, "Which manufacturer is doing that?" Because, Nobody is. Yeah. Nobody is. Nobody is. <laughs> yeah. But it's I go hilarious. I these trade shows and I'm like, yeah. hey, are you good? Nope, we're not. No. Uh, 
It's yeah. fine that you guys started there. Yeah, you know, it was me and about five other sprinkle fitters from the U.S. It's kind of evil for you to get everybody's hopes up. Like it was, a, it was a dick move, but I, it was funny <laughs> for us because it still pops up every once in a while. It'll pop up on a Facebook group, and we're just like, you know, I get a lot of swag going to all these different conferences, and I'll post a T-shirt and be like, yeah, this is what I got from the last project I was on. I just mm -hmm. recycled them all, and the guy brought this, and then somebody photoshopped like a, a Yeti cooler with the logo on it. I was like, oh, I got mm -hmm. a Yeti cooler. I did a warehouse with ESFRs. That's pretty funny. But for a while, like you know, the concealed caps, the ones yeah. that so mm -hmm. like yep. they used to make one that would that would uh, that would fit on the concealed heads, and then they'd also fit on like a semi-recessed inner. Oh, okay. The like inner as ring. like a paint cover. Yep. So like we used to keep a bunch of those in our shop. So whenever we'd install the semi-recessed heads, like if they're going to do paint or acoustical, then we go out and we put those on. It's not a bad idea. But it's funny because there's just a ton of like just a ton of plastic sitting in our shop. And, yeah. Like, but never, tra never thought we'd ever be able to trade it in for something. Oh, you won't. You never, yeah, you never have been able to, and you never will be able to. But, um, but what I've been doing here at the booth, uh, this demo unit, like yep. I, I, that's the last kind of thing that I want to talk about is the time savings or the possible yep. time savings. Um, got six, about sixteen minutes a box on average for the prep Perhaps work. So. Yep. Um, you got the expense of the head wrench, but then like, how many seconds does it save me in the air? So I came up with this idea. How about I do a demo unit so that we can do side by side comparables with people. Are they we racing they today? They install it one way and they, then I install it another. We're racing today. We are. We. I think that we should race. I think that. Uh, I think that. I think that I could probably install two in the time it takes you to tape tape and install one. You think you're doing two in the time it takes me to do one? I sure hope so. Pack Otherwise, one, I'm sir, you're bad. in for a long day at the office. All right. <laughs> Alrighty. All right. So let's right. Uh, let's let's. So that's that's the one with the thread on it there. Here, I'll even yeah. put a clean one there so that I know. All, All right. right. What do we do? Hands on the table, like uh, Family Feud style. Yeah. Alrighty. On you. Go. How's it going back there, buddy? Oh, just snugging her up. I mean, it was close. It was close. But, but you still I was doubled two. me. Yeah, you doubled me up. All right. All right. So, I'll bite. Here's the thing. Yeah. That time savings I just showed you. We we know like that only depends on how hard your fitter's working, right? Yeah. It also so hurt like, my pride I'm not going to promise you that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it is possible, right? Absolutely. Well, and you got to be able to use the tools in the proper way in order to get those time savings. Obviously, right? Yeah. A guy's only going to work as hard as he's going to work, anyways. If he thinks you're trying to save money so to put him out of a job, that's not the mentality that we need to have in this industry. Yeah. The faster you're in on those jobs, the faster you're getting out of those jobs. The faster you're on to the next jobs and installing sprinkler. Sprinklers mm -hmm. getting installed in more and more projects every day, and that's the mentality that we got to get these guys in. And there's obvious time savings with this product, but yep. with that, I also I, I think I try to get all of our sales all of our sales reps. I really try to get them to focus on those three sprinklers. Yeah. Because like you were saying, it's about getting onto the next system. Right. And yep. if I'm doing that, if I'm doing that hypothetical hydro at lunch, and I'm spending the other half of my day like hunting down those leaks and tightening them up, and then re reapplying a hydro. Yeah. Yep. Like, then I'm not hanging pipe on the next system or prepping to hang pipe on the next system. That's right. And that's yeah. that's mostly you're never doing like a single system ESFR. You're doing yeah, multiple. There's never, it's never two or three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's really where the benefit is and that's where the true time savings is. As far as the sprinkler design is concerned, it's exactly the same thing except for the way it makes into the sprinkler, which may not seem like a big deal to most people, but I'm assuming you guys had to go through the whole listing process with this again as well, right? Um, we actually, uh, we, we were able to kind of submit all of our testing and what, like the fire test and whatnot. Yep. We were able to use those all the same because we just changed the connection type. Okay. Um, however, it was very important uh, for us to consider things like uh, deflector distance from center line of pipe. Yep. And we kept that true uh, awesome. to a standard outlet so that whenever you're using one or the other, you don't have that thing where you have to check, well, am I half or one inch within where my deflector is supposed to be. So what I want to do right now is I want you to show me, I'm grabbing the camera here and going, going manual. I want to see why the gasket on the sprinkler isn't able to, uh, to twist off. Oh, okay. Like how come 
if guys are putting these in and they have the gasket in there, why why isn't that thing going to twist and why isn't it going to pinch or anything like that? Because the pinched rubber's on like any you know groove coupling stuff like that out of the concern, right? So yeah. with a gasket, how am I not going to thread that in there or crank it in too tight and and crack that rubber? So that's luckily we do whenever we develop this product. We had two X fitters on the development team. Okay, um, and. One of us pointed that out, it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> but you know who you are, thank yeah. you for your contribution, buddy. Yep. Um, but he pointed out, hey, we know that this is gonna be an issue, but like, should we cover our bases on this? Right. Um, and the engineering team like made a quick quick step and uh, they actually added the step out. Okay. And what happens with that step out is it makes contact with that welded outlet before you have the ability to crush that gasket. So you don't necessarily have a torque setting, but when the sprinkler goes in, there is a lip on the side of the sprinkler, on the edge of the sprinkler right there. That's going to mm -hmm. keep it, if you're listening to this on audio, hopefully I'm describing it good enough. But that sits in onto the shoulder inside here and prevents you from over torquing that sprinkler. Yeah. And that's what, that's kind of a good, good thing about this product is we did. We, we thought of all the angles and we really did. That was a big consideration. And obviously you're not going to make it in without the proper protection on the sprinkler yeah <laughs> so with this i do i did like this because this was the first time like in a in a field setting that wasn't with somebody on their system that was going to be installed yeah so what i've been doing this week to kind of prove like to those people who like worry about that pinch rubber is I'm really gonna crank it down. Yep. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to crack that gasket. So, right there, like I got it cranked down as hard as I can get it. Yep. Let's see what kind of condition that gasket's in. I think I broke that. I think I broke the cap yeah. with my hand. <laughs> Still brand new. What's the reusability on these sprinklers? Are you able to remove them and place them? So these How are these are an EPDM gasket material. Okay. So like the life cycle of it would be similar to that of like a of a groove coupling. It's made out of the same material. Um, you're not going to have any chemical compatibility concerns with that, and it's going to age similar to that. Um, our suggestions are like if we did what I just did, yep. where we just Put it in and remove it yep not really an issue but if you have these installed over a long period of time uh, like say like a month yep whenever you remove it then you'd want to replace the gasket, the gasket before itself reinstalling. so the sprinkler is good for the life of the sprinkler based off the date stamped on it but the gaskets are a if you, re if you remove it because right. you got to think about it like and that's really just a precaution it's like a, it's like a should or it's not a should not a shall right you know what i mean yeah. um but just as the manufacturer, you kind of look at that and you say, okay, if this is in the compressed state for a long period of time, yep. you could have some deformities that might happen. Sure. So if you are going to replace it, then just get the gaskets from us, which the gaskets are available yep. with the sprinklers. I think they're, they're, they're less than 25 cents a pop. So Perfect. Awesome. Nick, thanks for the demonstration. Thanks, thanks. for allowing me the opportunity to beat you at your own game. Yep. And uh, I mean... It, it, it proves itself. It does, and I really awesome. do appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you uh, taking it easy on me today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. All right, buddy. Yeah, we'll see you.